Thank you, Jesus. Greetings to everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of God. There's the joy in the praise of God will it come. There's the happiness in the praise of God. The happiness will not come to you unless until you get soaked in the word of God. Tonight is another day that we are going to hear this word and we are going to get into the blessings of God for what we have started. We have started the nature message, God angels, angels of God. We have started this message. And this is the introduction which is going on. We took the introduction on last Friday. We started this introduction about God the angel and angels of God last Friday. And now we are going to continue this messages and all the teachings that God has given to us from the Holy Bible, that only they are going to learn. We are not going to see whatever actually the religious practice or the denomination practice they talk or they teach about the angels. No. We want to only learn what the Bible is teaching you, what the Bible is telling you, what the Bible is telling is from God's words and God's word. Therefore, you must believe the Bible, you must take it to your life and you must get the blessings of God that God has given to us. For someone I saw, I do not know the now or today, I don't know. Anyway, never mind. The blessings of God, we shall be able to see them. And today they are going to continue the remaining portion of this introduction of God the angel and angels of God. We came to a subject that angels are classified in five different areas. Number one, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. Okay? In the Old Testament, let's go to the Old Testament first. Daniel chapter 4, verse 22 and 23. Daniel chapter 4, verse 22 and 23. We are going to see how the angels are classified. They are classified in five sections. What are those five sections? Number one, angels are watchers or watching angels. Number two, angels are heavenly angels or heavenly hosts. Number three, angels are angel spirits or spirit being. Number four, they have, they are actually called principalities, powers, thrones, dominion and authority. They hold all these things. That's why when Daniel was praying for his blessing and when God released his blessing during his party and prayer, the demonic hold, the power of the darkness of this world has stopped his blessing. And God sent the angels to fight against those power of darkness angels and release the blessings of Daniel. Today so many blessings are blocked. Of your source, so many blessings are blocked. What your blessings are blocked in your life? You ask God to send the angel to fight against the power of darkness. People may falsely say something, falsely appease you. You may also lose your blessings or your benefits. They may also spread some evil words. Evil words are also having power to destroy your lives or bring destruction, bring sicknesses, sorrows, evil dreams, and unwanted things to happen to our lives, our jobs, our finances. All this is happening by evil words because the Bible says the tongue has power. Power to bless, power to curse, and there is a lack of death in the tongue. Today we are going to see the angels, God the angels, and angels of God, which is classified in five things. In five things. And the fifth way is they are also called the sons of God. Number one, they are watchers. The Bible clearly says the God the angel or angels of God, they are watchers. According to Daniel chapter 4, 22 and 23. I can read. Okay. Daniel chapter 4 verse 22 and 23. Here when you read the word God, there the Bible tells says, When Daniel was sleeping, he had a dream. The word God says, When Daniel was sleeping, in verse 13, he had a dream. But they go to read verse 22 and 23. In the dream, he saw the heavenly angel has come near his bedside and talking to him and telling him. So also you pray that the angel of God shall open the door for you, for your blessing. The angel of the Lord shall show you the way that you shall go. The angel of the Lord shall give you your contract, your blessings, your commas, your residences, your finances. Go and fight the battle against the evil power so that you shall walk into the bless of God. See, day by day as I prepare, the practical word comes out of my mouth, not because I am decided. 
I never decided anything about telling. When I was praying here, God is giving. Because I am preparing the word. Because the Bible says, it is. the angel of the Lord, or godly angels, they are also messengers. They bring the message from heaven. Why? The messages are sent by God to comfort you, to guide you, to edify you, to tell you about your destiny, so you shall be comforted. You shall be edified in your knowledge that you have about God and about His holy word. So also you shall be directed in which direction you shall go. You shall not make mistakes being a man. You shall not make mistakes. You shall walk in the path of God. You shall walk in the direction of God so that your blessings which God has reserved for you, you shall be able to receive. Come on, let us hear. Daniel chapter 4, verse 22 and 23. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong. For thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven. And thy dominion to the end of the earth. Was ready. And whereas the king saw a watcher. The king saw. When Daniel was there. Daniel had seen the watchers. In verse 13 the Bible says. When he was living. And now the king is also seeing this. What king is seeing? Verse 23. And whereas the king saw a watcher. The king saw the watchers. And an holy one coming down from heaven. The holy one. The watchers are not now, but they are holy one coming from heaven. Heaven. They are heavenly watchers. Number two, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, and Luke chapter 2, verse 30. In these two scriptures, the Bible is speaking about these are the heavenly hosts. Let us see Luke chapter 2, verse 30. Luke chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible clearly says, These are heavenly angels. These are heavenly hosts. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Read. Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace, goodwill toward man. The Bible clearly says, This is talking about the birth of Jesus before the world. And when they heard about the good news of birth of Jesus Christ, the Bible says the heavenly angels came down and they were you know, numerable, unnumerable. You cannot count them, so many angels, and they were all glorifying God, singing glory, Hosanna, and praise the Lord. The Bible clearly says in Hebrew chapter 1, verse 4 and 4, as well as 14, I will read for you. They are the angelic being, they are the angelic spirits, they are the spirit being. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4 Being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Verse 14 Verse 14 Are they not all ministering spirits? They are all ministering spirits. Then sent forth to minister for them who shall be of yes, they will preach about salvation, they will guide you for salvation, they will tell you about salvation. Ministry spirits. The Bible clearly says in Job, in uh, sorry, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. In Romans chapter 8, verse 38. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. In all this, the Bible says the angels are principalities. They have also powers, they also have thrones, and they are dominion and authority. All these names are given unto the angel. And then in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, the Bible clearly says, When the sons of God gather together to worship the Lord, sons of God are called the angelic host or angelic power. The Bible says, In sons of their, their names are given, sons of God. Remember what exactly the Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. This Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 speaks about the dream. I think I'm right. Yes, speaks about the dream. The angels came into the dream of Joseph. This Joseph is nobody else but going to be a husband to mother of Jesus, Mary. And when he was deciding, he had a dream because he was troubled in his heart. He got a salutation from Gabriel Angel. Gabriel Angel spoke to mother of Jesus, Mary, saying that you shall conceive. You shall have a son. His name shall be called Jesus. And she was yet unmarried. 
How can unmarried woman get pregnant in the society, in the religion, in all the way in the world? They will curse her, they will say so many things, but the salvation came to her by the angel called Gabriel. And when this came, Joseph also was troubled. And when Joseph was troubled, that's the time God sends an angel to speak to you or speak to him in the dream. My brothers, my sister, recently I spoke to you about the dream. Last Friday. So also I tell the people, when you get the dream, try to analyze the dream. Understand how this dream has come. Why this dream has come. Sometimes the dream comes, the remaining thoughts of your mind, which is incomplete, they can also come as a dream. Sometimes you are in workplaces. Sometimes you want to talk to somebody and you are incomplete in your talk or the thoughts are remaining like that in your mind, that also can come as a dream. But when God shows you the dream, the dream will be remembered. That we will have an action. That we will have a reserve. That we will be showing to you what God has a plan for you. Therefore you must be able to understand. And here is Joseph who is having a dream and the plan of God is revealed unto him. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 and 21. But while he thought on those things, on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. I want to tell you one thing. If you see the angel tomorrow, or if you are sleeping and you get the dream of the angel, remember first word of the angel. Don't forget this. Throughout the entire Bible, in the Old Testament, 160 times the angel word is come. Angel is being angel, God the angel. This word is come 160 times in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, 180 times. More only, not less. It has come into the New Testament 180 times. But in all this, whenever the angels spoke to the Old Testament people, and whenever they spoke to the New Testament people, including Jesus Christ our Lord, and also Joseph and Mary, the first salutation, fear not. Do not be afraid. So also if the angel is speaking to you, he will not turn according to his mind. Whatever God has spoken to him to speak to you, he will speak to you. But the first word of angel is always fear now. Because in all the Old Testament, the angels are speaking to everyone, saying that fear not, fear not, fear not, do not be afraid. Even in the New Testament, the angel of the Lord is also speaking, or God angels, they are speaking, fear not, do not be afraid. So also when you get the dream, or you see the angel, sometimes you may see the angel in fear, Angel may talk to you, angel may guide you, angel will come to you in dreams and they will say the first word. What is the word? Fear not. Fear not. Do not be afraid. Come on, read that word. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph the son of David. Joseph the son of David. Fear not to take. Fear not to take. Unto thee. Mary thy wife. Yes. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. That which is conceived. She is already pregnant now. She is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Not by anybody else. So you have to take her as your wife. God is guiding him and telling him through the angel of God. An angel of God is helping her or telling her, fear not, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because what she is conceived is by the Holy Spirit. Coming back to the word of God, the Bible also says, angelic host or godly angel, they have their names. And specifically, there are sometimes, there are differences in the Bibles. And in these Bibles, there are some extra added angels. And there are some specific angels. There are two types of Bibles which I simply speak about. One is of the Protestant, another one is of the Catholic or Universal Bible. The Universal Bible speaks to you, or the Catholic Bible or Roman Catholic Bible speaks to you about more angels and they have different types of angels names which is written only in the specific book. But those angelic references are not in other books of the Old and the other New Testaments. Nevertheless, in the Protestant Holy Bible, only these three names are written and they do not have the books that is in the Catholic or Roman Catholic or Universal Bible.
which have been many records of so many other angels. Nevertheless, I come back to tell you from the King James Version, the Bible clearly says only three angels being having their name. Number one, Gabriel Angel. Number two, Michael Angel. Number three, Lucifer the Fallen Angel. The Bible says Gabriel Angel's name is given in the book of Daniel chapter 8. In the New Testament, Luke chapter 1. Michael Angel's name is shown also in the book of Daniel and also in the New Testament, Genesis chapter 12 and 2 chapter, only one chapter is there, verse 9. Lucifer Angel's name is given. His name is given in Genesis chapter 1. Sorry, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Lucifer's name is given in the book of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1 or chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. In the New Testament, it is given Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. And also, Revelation chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 20, the Lucifer's name is mentioned. And Lucifer has so many other names that is also given. But the name of the original name of the angels are not changed for Gabriel and for Michael Angel. Michael Angel and Gabriel Angel, they have lots of assistants, but their names are not changed. Gabriel is Gabriel Angel and Messenger. Michael is the warrior angel and his name is Michael. But Lucifer's names are changed. Lucifer's names are changed because he got so many other names after falling down into the earth. The Bible clearly says Lucifer's name is called the first old serpent, the fallen angel, the dragon, the light of this world, Satan, liar, deceiver, adversary, dragon, and so other names are there. And these are the three important angels that is mentioned in the Bible. What good and godly angels they do? What the godly angels and angels of God they do? This is very important. You must learn from the angel what exactly they do. Because they are created by God. So also you should be able to remember. I should be able to remember. We are also created by the same God. Our God has created us. Our God has created before he could create us. Our God has created whom? He created angels. And after creating angels, one of the angels rebelled and he fell down from the heavenly places. And the Bible clearly says, therefore, you should be able to learn what these angels are. Angels are higher than little, little higher than man. And these angels, these godly angels, what they do? Or angels of God, what they do? The Bible says Hebrew chapter 1 verse 6. In Hebrew chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible clearly tells us about the godly angel, about the angel of God, what is their work, or what they do exactly in the heavenly places and on the earth. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 6. And again, when he bring up in first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of God worship the Creator. Worship him, worship God, worship God though, and nobody else. Remember, this is the number one. Even in Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, when you read Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 and 2, 11 and 12, this is the last book of the Holy Bible. In this last book of the Holy Bible, also God is saying to you that angels, angels, they always worship God. And at the second coming of our Lord Jesus, angels also will descend along with him. They will also come along with the Lord Jesus Christ and Mary at the second coming. And when he is coming down from the heavenly place at the second coming, which only God the Father knows and nobody knows, even Jesus doesn't know of his second coming. During that time, the angels will accompany our Lord Jesus. They will be playing different type of instruments. There will be a great noise in the heavenly places. There will be a nice of trumpet. There will be a nice of clapping. There will be a nice of so many instruments. And Jesus will be coming with his glory. And the glory will be seen all around him. And angels and many saints will be all around him. The Bible says, angels of God, the angels or angels of God has the one work to worship God and to praise God all the time. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And I beheld. And I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. The Bible clearly says, this is John the Revelator who is talking about. And he's saying that I saw many angels worshiping God. Verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, 
What is the lamb that was slain to receive power? Look back to the angels, what they are saying. Angels are saying, what is the lamb? They are recognizing Jesus Christ of Nazareth as the lamb, never uttered a word when he was dying for the entire world. When he was shedding the blood, he did not cry, he did not say anything. Only before this cross could come in his life, he asked God the Father, if it is possible, take away this cup from my life. Nevertheless, she did not get any answer from God the Father. It means she understood that God the Father's plan is that I should sacrifice my life on the cross of Calvary by shedding of the blood for the entire world and for you and for me. And Jesus did. And during the Bible, the, the, sorry, the Bible clearly says, Saying with a loud voice, What is the lamb that was slain to receive power? What is the lamb that was slain to give us the power? And riches and wisdom and strength. Every man of message. Therefore, I always tell you, my brothers, my sister, remember your faith has to be right faith. Your faith cannot be religious. My faith cannot be religious. Our faith cannot be a denomination. Your faith cannot be a denomination faith. That does not mean any message of God. You and I unknowingly are not knowing the word of God we are making the error. So we shall know the way that God is telling us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We also shall know the truth that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is teaching us and telling you. So also we shall know we shall have life through Jesus Christ our Lord and nobody else. The Bible clearly says number two. They also show God's law. They give us God's law. And the, the law, the law also was given to Moses by the angels. Genesis, sorry. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, the Bible says, The angel of the Lord shows us the, shows us the law of God. Not only really that, the angel of the Lord gives us the law of God. They give the law of God, they give us the teaching of God, they show us the laws of God, they also give us the laws of God. In the Old Testament, the Bible claims it, even Moses received the law of God through the angel. Angel gave them the law of God. That is mentioned. So we are going to come back to that. But let us read Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. Wherefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by the angels in the hand of mediator. The Bible can say, Wherefore then suffer the law. How you serve the law? It was added because of transgression, because of our sins. God gave us the law so that we shall know that we shall not be a transgression of the law. When God gave this law, how it came? Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was seed is which seed is talking about. About which seed God is talking about? The seed of the woman. Coming back to the word, the Bible says, Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The word God then says in Psalm 68, verse 17. Psalm 68, verse 17. In Psalm 68, verse 17, the Bible clearly says, The law was given by God. But the, the angels of God gave the law to Moses. The chariots of God are 20,000. Even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them. As in Sinai. In the holy place. So at Sinai. When the law was given by the angels of God to Moses. The Bible says there were so many chariots. Why the chariots were required? They are chariots of not anybody. But they were angel in fools. Remember what happened to a rich man according to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, the Bible clearly says there were two people. One was beggar and his name was Lazarus. And there was another rich man. His name is not mentioned in the Bible. See, all this Bible clearly says, whoever's name is mentioned in the book of life is saved. Whose names are not mentioned in the book of life is already damned, kind of. Rich man was living on the earth. He was alive. But his name was not written in the book of life, neither in the Bible. He was already turned down by God. You must always see your name is written in the book of life. Our name must be in the book of the Lord God Almighty, book of life. So that we shall know after the death we shall be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Because our names will be written or shown or read by the angels of God. My brothers, my sisters, this is 100% true. 
Not because I am preaching you or telling you. No, it is written in the Bible. You must be afraid about this. That our names are written in the book of life or not. You must be always seeing that the holiness of God, righteousness of God does not come through religious practices. It comes through following the laws of God, following the commandments of God, following the teachings of God. It is hard, but you have to do it. Because Bible clearly says, even Jesus said, do not walk in the broad way, but walk through the narrow way. What is why Jesus says like that? Because Broadway is very easy to do everything, but you do not go to the place where you are supposed to go, what Jesus Christ of Nazareth and God the Father has prepared the heaven. But narrow way, your desires, your pleasures, sometimes, you know, sometimes of things that you want to live with, you want to surrender your life to God, surrender your life to Jesus and follow the laws and commandments and all men are teaching. These are difficult. This is narrow way. But yet, when you follow the narrow way, your names are written in the book of life. When your names are written in the book of life, you are entitled to go into the kingdom of heaven. You may say, never mind. But remember, I want to tell you again and again. I have got another message from that rich man and uh, poor beggar and others. This rich man was living on the earth, but his name was not in the book of the Bible. Never his name was in the book of life. And that's why as soon as he died, he opened his eyes and he was in the hellfire. Because his name was not in the book of life, it was not in the book of the Holy Bible. But Baker Lazarus' name is there in the book of the life by Bible. It means so much of suffering, so much of sorrow, so much of pain, so much of agony. But something must be there in his life that God kept him alive and took him to the heavenly places during that time. When Lazarus died, the chariots came down of angels to take his soul to the kingdom of God. My brothers, my sister, and he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the saying was not used unto him that he had wasted his goods. We are talking about the previous thing, Psalms. Psalms actually 68 verse 17. In Psalm 68 verse 17, the Bible clearly says that even Moses received the law. Law is very important for you and I. Teachings of God is very important for you and I. No, God is not happy when I am more religious. God is happy when I follow the law of God. When I follow the teachings of God. When I follow the commandments of God. Tomorrow I need not to keep my hands on the fire and say, what did I do? I preached the gospel, but I did not preach properly. What did I do? I knew the gospel, but I did not understand the gospel. What did I do? You did not have to repent. You did not have to be sorrowful. You know the righteous way. When you follow, I follow. You are reserved for the kingdom of God. You did not have to say, oh, I wasted my life. I did not do what God is telling me to do. I did not do what God is telling me to hear the voice of God. Moses was so open, Moses heard the voice of God through the angels of God and received the laws of God. The Bible says the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. And the Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Next word. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. The Bible clearly says God was telling everything about every rich man and poor man and those who followed the word of God and not followed the word of God. Take, go, go back to verse 16, 68, 16. While ye be ye high hills, this is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The Lord will be there, and the Lord was there in the Mount Sinai. He gave the laws of God to Moses. That's what the Bible says. When you read Psalm 68 in Italian, you'll be able to understand. Acts chapter 7, verse 53 says, In Acts chapter 7, verse 53, the Bible clearly says, Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. They have received the law. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Angels gave the laws. Angels brought the laws and gave it to them. My brothers, my sister. So angels are not divine. 
Not the law of God of their own, but they bring the law of God of it to you. They show the law of God to you. Angels are also called the God's judgment taker. Psalms 25 verse 1 and 5 and 6. Acts chapter 12 verse 22 and 23. Revelation chapter 16 verse 1. The Bible tells it, angels of God, they do execute judgment of God. What is the judgment of God they take it? Remember, in the book of Revelation, the Bible clearly says, God is going to send the plague upon the unrighteous, those who will be remaining. And when they are there on the earth, God will send the plague. But God will send the plague through whom? The angels are going to release the plague upon the earth. Remember what did God say in the book of, you know, the book of Exodus, when God told them to have a Passover lamb, apply the blood upon the doorpost and upon the lintel of earth, and eat the Passover and leave the place to walk towards the promised land. During that time, the God said, I will send you the angel of death. I will send you the angel of death. What is this? God is going to send the angel who is going to take the punishment of God upon the earthly people. And every firstborn will die, God said. Every firstborn captain, every firstborn man, every firstborn woman, every firstborn who has the breath will die. And how they will die? The angel of death will come down and pass over the Egypt. Pass over all the Egypt. Or all over the land of Egypt. And when the angel of the Lord will pass over all the land of the Egypt, Egypt the firstborn will die. Because the angel of the Lord will carry the judgment of God upon the firstborn. Upon the firstborn cattle. Upon the firstborn anything that is there in Egypt, including man and woman. And Pharaoh lost his son and came back to his senses and allowed the people of Israel to go out of Egypt. My brothers, my sister, I want to remind you one thing. That God's judgment through the angel of God is coming upon us. God does not come and catch my leg saying that why are you doing this? But the angel of the Lord will come down and catch surely my leg and say that you have done wrong. You have done right. You have done right. The judgment of God will be visible for us and we will be able to understand. The Bible clearly says, they also protect the people of God. They also protect the people of God. Especially they protect the righteous. They protect those who fear God. They protect those who understand God. They protect those who follow the laws of God. The Bible clearly says, among all, my brothers, my sisters, therefore one of you and you, every one of you and me, we should be able to understand what God is telling you through this message. What God is explaining to you through this message. What is the plan of God? What should go into your brain and my brain? What should be able, what should we be able to understand from this message of God the angel and angel of God? We should be able to understand what God is telling us to understand. And God is telling you that angels of God will do the judgment. Not only really that, angels of God will also protect you. Angels of God will protect his people. And when the Bible says the angels of God will protect his people, who are his people? Those who fear the Lord will be protected. Those who are righteous in the sight of God will be protected. So also those who follow the laws of God will be protected. Those who fear the Lord and do his commandments, they will be protected. Those who put their trust in the Lord will be protected. And how they will be protected? God is not going to come down, but God will send his angel to you. God will send the angel and a sign upon every life. A sign of every woman, every man. Otherwise, today, the devil would have destroyed us before we could survive in our lives. But because of the, because of the angelic force that is protecting us, we are protected. Otherwise, somebody's magic work will destroy you. Somebody's satanic power will destroy you. Somebody's curses will kill you. But angelic force comes and protects you, guards you, guides you. And the Bible says, angelic force of God protects your life when you fear the Lord. When you are righteous in God, when you obey the laws of God, when you are ready to fear the Lord and trust in the Lord, and when you are obeying the commandments of God. There are many scriptures, but I want to complete the message of tonight so that you shall be blessed and you shall be able to get the blessings of God with this continued introduction of God the angel and angel of God. The next thing the Bible says is the final thing. It will also appear to everybody. It will appear to all of you. Angel of God is not that you are not able to see. But angels of God will not appear as you see me. I'm in a physical realm, wearing the suit and clothes and color you can see. But the angel of God is very beings. They'll be seen, and at the same time, you'll be seen in a different manner. They'll be transparent. They'll be having a structure. 
They'll be having a beach. And our imagination always is like that. The angel of God will be little children. No, angel of God are mighty. Angel of God will be women. Women are not angel of God. Angel of God only men. And only man. And only having still four weeks and six weeks. They do not carry two weeks at all. Biblical references are there, but every time the Bible speaks about the angel of God does not have two weeks, they have four weeks, or they have six weeks. Six weeks they have. And they are mighty. They are broad in shoulders. Their faces are also broad and very neat and very systematic. And when you look up to them, surely you will be fear. Therefore, the first message they give to the people of God, those who know God and those who love God, fear not. Do not be afraid. That's why they always give this message. Because their figures are gigantic. They also carry the glory of God. They also come with the power. When they stand, you will not be able to stand in a perfect manner. We are going to see many examples as we go by about the angels of God. The Bible says the next. Angels are the angels, those who have built unto men and women. One example I would like to give you. Matthew chapter 16 verse 27. Matthew chapter 16 verse 27 says about the second coming of our Lord Jesus at the For the Son of Man shall come Yes, in this is talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth. Son of Man, Jesus Christ born out of Virgin Mary. Son of God, God sent him through Virgin Mary to this earth. Son of God was born through Virgin Mary full of the power of God, full of the Holy Spirit of God, without a man. The Bible says For the Son of Matthew chapter 16 Verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. When the second coming of our Lord Jesus will be there, the Bible says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. He will come with the glory of his Father. With his angels. Say now with his angels. Say now with his angels. 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 With their angels. With his angels. Jesus Christ and Lord, when he's coming, he's coming with his own glory, also with Father's glory, and he's coming with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. I will also get good reward, bad reward. I will get a good reward and bad reward. For all the good things that I have done, I will get good. If I have done something bad, definitely I am going to get a bad reward. I pray that I should not get a bad reward. Therefore, I am carefully preaching the gospel. I am carefully understanding the word of God. I am carefully saying to the Lord God, Am I preaching the right gospel? Or am I making any mistake? I am not supposed to make any mistake. If I do not know the gospel, I should not preach wrongly. But I shall preach rightly. Therefore, one has to study the word of God. One has to know which pastor you should contact. One has to know how I should read the word of God. One has to know what this pastor knows about the word of God. Whether he is teaching and preaching about the word. Or whether he is teaching from his mind. Whether he is preaching the religion. Whether he is teaching the denomination. You must be able to analyze. Do not make mistakes. But some blind man. And with some blind people. You will also go and fall in the ditch. Not quickly. When he works, you will also fall along with him. You should not be such people. You should be able to know the truth. You shall be able to understand the ways of Jesus Christ. You shall be able to understand the life that is given unto us through Jesus Christ our Lord. That you should not be a loser of that life which God has given to you and unto me. So the Bible clearly says, angels are announcing the great evil that is going to happen. This is one among them. The coming of our Lord Jesus. Angels are going to come along with him. And you will be seeing and all the earth will see. Nevertheless, they go to announce about the events of our Lord Jesus Christ and his life. Luke chapter 1 verse 31. In Luke chapter 1 verse 31, they are announcing about the conception. Conception, correct? Right word? Conception about mother of Jesus Mary. They are announcing about the conception of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the womb of Mother Mary. The Bible says, and behold, thou shalt conceive. In thy own. My brothers, my sister, many do not believe the birth of Jesus. Many do not believe that Jesus was alive in the flesh and bones. Many do not believe that Jesus was born out of Virgin Mary. Many do not believe they believe that Jesus was not born. Some say that Jesus was not in existence. This is some history that the Christians are teaching and making people and disturbing people's mind. But the word of God is true. And what of God is remain true. And what of God is forever. Whoever has the word of God and his knowledge, the word of God's knowledge, 
will never fail. We'll see the kingdom of God and heavenly blessing. Not knowing the word of God, we may all fall. We may go astray. Therefore, it is good to read the word of God and understand the word of God. And more than the religious practices, more than the denominational practices, you and I must read the word. And we must read the word of God. The Bible clearly says the conception. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth the son and shall call his name. What? Jesus. Give him everything. The Bible clearly says the angels announce us. God the angels or angel of God, they announce the great events. And this is one of the greatest events in the entire world and book of history of mankind that the conception was announced about Jesus Christ of God through Virgin Mary. Then the birth is announced in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, 11, and 12. I will read for you so that you can go faster. Luke chapter 2, verse 10, 11, and 12. Verse 10 says, And the angels say unto them, Fear not. See, I want to tell you one thing. Watch this word. Hear this word. Read this word carefully because angels always have one message before they give the message of God to you, before they come and protect you, before they guide you, before they come over you, before they come around you, before they guide you for anything or they come to your help. First word of the angel always is given unto you. Fear not. Fear not. Do not be afraid. The Bible says, and the angels say unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Then, verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The next word. And this shall be a sign unto you. And shall find the babe wrapped in shrouded clothes, lying in a manger. The Bible says, that the God angels, the angel of God, they announce the great events of Jesus Christ our Lord. The number two, about the resurrection, Luke chapter 24. The angels of God announced about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are seeing the great events that the angels announced about Jesus Christ our Lord. Number two, Luke chapter 24, verse 22 and 23. Okay. And certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. Sepulcher. Number 23. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. They saw the visions of the angels, and then they, what they heard that he is alive. The word of the Lord here says, then the Bible speaks about Acts chapter 1 verse 9, 10, 11 and 12. In Acts chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible clearly speaks about the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so also Acts chapter 1 verse 11. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they behaved, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight, was dead. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white of Bible says that he was taken up, he was ascension, or he ascended into heaven after he was crucified at the cross of Calvary, was buried in the bar tomb, rose again on the third day, Jesus Christ of Nazareth was ascended, after living with the disciples and in that town, forty full days and forty full nights after that Jesus was taken up. During that time, the, the ascension or the resurrection was shown. The Bible also says about the second coming, same chapter, verse 11. And the same chapter, verse 11 says, Which also say, A man of Galilee, why stand you gazing? Why you are gazing at that ascension of Jesus Christ? Why are you looking that you will not be able to see him again? That's the question of the other people and the people of Galilee. And that is the time the Bible clearly says, one more time I'll read for you, which also said, Hey men of Galilee, why stand it gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. As you have seen him go into heaven, like manner he's going
going to come down. And that is the second coming of our Lord Jesus. Oh, Galileans. Galileans spoke unto the disciples. Why are you surprised about his ascension? Why are you surprised that Jesus Christ and Lord is taken up like this? The Jesus, the Lord Jesus, that you are saying going up to heaven, is going to come again. The Lord Jesus, how he's taken up, he's going to come again. And that thing they are saying, shall so come in like manner, like the same day as he went up with the ages around, so also he's come down with the ages around, as you have seen him go into heaven. They talk about the second coming. The Bible clearly says, the record of the good angels are given unto us to minister to the people of God. And they minister also in the Old Testament people and they minister unto the New Testament people. Bible says they always minister, they guide, they talk, they tell, they reveal, they tell the blood of God to you. All these things are mentioned and some of the examples are there in the Old Testament. Bible says the angels of God has a record that they spoke to the people of God in the Old Testament. Bible also has a record to tell you that they spoke in the New Testament people. Bible also has a record saying that they are going to speak to the people that is the Christian, those who fear the Lord, those who trust in the Lord in the present days. What a wonderful place of God. Angels are not gone away. They are still speaking. They spoke in the Old Testament to the Old Testament people. They spoke in the New Testament time when Jesus was there. During that time they spoke to so many, even to our Lord Jesus. The Bible says that angels came and ministered unto our Lord Jesus. And then now, the angels of God is ministering to the Christian people, those who fear the Lord, and those who want to walk in righteousness and holiness. Even otherwise, God has his angel given unto man and woman. That we are going to see continuously. The Bible clearly says, to whom in the Old Testament the angel of the Lord spoke. Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16 verse 7 onwards. Genesis chapter 16, 7 onwards. There's a wonderful history, a wonderful story that God has given unto us. That you should be able to understand how the angels were speaking to the Old Testament people. I always want to refer Old Testament and the New Testament. Bible does not have separate date. Old Testament is God and only follow the New Testament. No. People are printing New Testament. People are giving also New Testament in a different manner, in all type of Bible, all type of translation. But Old Testament is not to be forgotten. Old Testament has to be attached to the New Testament, and you have to study the Old Testament and the New Testament for the right knowledge of God in your lives. So it's always good to buy a Bible which has the Old Testament and the New Testament. When you have this Bible of the Old Testament and New Testament, you can report the Word of God in the Old Testament and check up also in the New Testament. So today God is telling you, remember the Old Testament about the angels, that how they spoke to the Old Testament people. Number one, Genesis chapter 16, verse 7, 7 to 13. Lovely brother. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness. The Bible speaks about a woman called Hagar. Hagar was a maid for Sarah. Hagar became maid to Sarah as well as to Abraham. But Sarah wanted Hagar to you know, come and live with her husband called Abraham. And she had a great plan to have a son out of her. And the Bible claim says she forgot the voice of God that was spoken to her and spoken to her husband. Remember the angel of the Lord only brought this message to Abraham. But before Abraham could leave his house of the father and kindred, God had spoken unto him, leave this house leave this place and go to the place that I will show you and I will bless you. I will magnify you. I will give you a son and through your son all the generation of the earth will be blessed. And whoever curses you, I will curse them. But in the, in the family, you will be blessed and all your generation will be blessed. After receiving this message, Abraham forgot. But Sarah had this thought, even Sarah God sent an angel to speak to her. Do not worry, you will surely have a son. The angel that spoke to Abraham also spoke to Sarah. But Sarah made a foolish decision and her decision was nobody else but the maid who was working with her. And this is what the Bible speaks about. And the angel of the Lord found her, her 
water by a fountain of water in the wilderness. By the fountain in the way to Shur. Verse 8. And he said, Hagar Sarai's maid. I will, I will talk. I will speak. I will read. I will read down this so that everybody can be able to come to verse 13. And he said, Hagar, the angel of the Lord spoke to Hagar. This is my first message that the angel of the Lord spoke to the Old Testament people. Angel of the Lord spoke to the Old Testament people. Angel of the Lord spoke to the New Testament people. Angel of the Lord speaks to all the creatures, those who fear the Lord today also. But let us go to the Old Testament. And he said, Father, Salah is made. Angel is so clear and perfect. And every detail the angel of the Lord is telling Father. Father, Salah is made. When comest thou? From where you are coming? And whither will thou go? And where are you going? And the Bible says, and Hagar said, she said, it means Hagar, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. I ran away from Sarah. That was to a night. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, return to thy mistress and submit thyself unto her hands. My brothers, my sister, that's why you must be able to understand, sometimes this angelic word comes through the prophet. Angel also makes the prophet to speak. When they hear the word from the right ear, when they hear the word from the left ear, angel of the Lord speaks to them and they prophesy. Are you understanding? And the word of the Lord clearly says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and not only that, submit thyself unto her and her hands. So the angel also gives the message and gives the direction and helps them. The last verse. Ten, uh, ten verse. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed. See, the angel of the Lord gave the message to Hagar, I will multiply your seed, exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Remember, the angel of the Lord said, What seed you are going to have? She was pregnant that time. It will be multiplied and it will not be numbered. The next word. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, Thou art with child, you are pregnant, and shall bear a son, you will have a son, and it shall he and shall call his name. You shall call his name. And this is what is the Ishmaelite generation where we are today. All the Muslim people are not against us. They're not against them. They are our first cousins. But many do not understand this. Ishmaelite generation is blessed. Not because of you and I, not because they are staying in the land, because of God blessed them and God gave them the word through the angel, saying that your seed, what you have in your home, you are going to have a son and his name is going to be called Ishmael. Even him I am going to bless, him I will prosper, for him I will give everything. His generation will be not countable. You cannot count such a matter of numbers of people it will be. And the Bible says, because the Lord has heard thy affliction. Because the God has seen your trials, your tribulations. The next word, verse 12. And then, and he will be a wild man. Your Ishmael will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. There are a lot of things to explain here, but I will just read for you and try to understand. And every man stand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all these brethren. Next word is the final word. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her, Thou God seest me. God, you have seen me. But angel was speaking to her. Through angel, God's message was given unto her. Through angel, God's message is given unto you. Through the angel, the Old Testament received the message of God as a messenger. And also in the New Testament, angel of God spoke to the New Testament people, including Jesus. They gave the message of God as God is speaking to them directly. You must learn this. You must understand this. You must keep it in your mind. You must study more about angel. And you shall have the blessings of God to have a good angel for you. An angel of the Lord will be surely given to you. Hereafter your life will be totally different. Understanding about angel and also living for your protection, for your guidance, for your help, for your message. God will give you the angel. The word of the Lord clearly says, and she called. I have called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. The Lord, she said to the angel, and she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. Thou God seest me. 
For she said, Have I also here looked unto him that seeth me? Are you also going to look unto him and me as you are seeing me? That I am pregnant, I am in this situation. My brothers, my sister, in the Old Testament, Hagar received the message of the angel which was brought by God or which was given to her by God. And she recognized this message of the angel is not of the angel, but angel spoke to her God's message. Therefore, she reverent said that she did not worship the angel. Angel, she did not worship, but she called the angel God. Why she called the angel Lord? Because the word of the Lord came through that angel. So she remembered and she said that it is the Lord's word. I see the Lord speaking through you to me. And she received that word of the Lord in her life. My brothers, my sister, Bible clearly says, angel of the Lord are spirit beings. Angel of the Lord are created by God. Angels were created before man and woman were created. Angels are created by our God. And our God created them in the heavenly places. And therefore the Bible clearly says, angels are not to be worshipped. Angels are not supposed to be worshipped. Angels are not supposed to be imagined also. You cannot imagine and draw and keep their picture in the houses. You cannot keep the angel photographs. You cannot keep the images of angels. You cannot imagine about the angel and keep them in their houses. You cannot worship angel. You cannot have the picture of the angel. Angel, you cannot have the image of angel. Neither you shall worship angel. God permits. And remember, you cannot, we cannot worship angels at all. And we shall be able to understand the law or the commandments of God. You shall have no other gods before me. This is the first and the foremost and the strong commandment of God for all the people. Those who like to believe in God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit of God. You cannot worship angels. The Bible says that in Genesis chapter 19, In Genesis chapter 19, God speaks to Abraham. And God sends the angel to speak to Abraham. This is a big story. Nevertheless, I will just tell you in short. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1, 2 and 3. Now you can read loudly to them. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Again, understand the scriptures directly, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. Even means evening. Two angels came. And Lot sat in the gates of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. They were different than the men. They were totally different at look. They were so different, Lot could understand these are not normal men because Sodom and Gomorrah he was already living in with his wife and daughters. Lot was already living after he separated from Abraham. He came to the plain, he came to this land of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was green, it was plain, rivers were there, water was full of plenty. But Lot did not think whether this is the plan of God or what. Sodom and Gomorrah was full of sin. And unwanted things was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels of the Lord came, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. The next word. And he said, Behold now, my loss, turn in, come in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and carry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, No. He thought that these angels are finding a place to rest. They want to eat something, they want to take rest, and they want to go. So night time they have come to stay with Lot. That's what he thought. But that was not the plan. God sent these angels for a special occasion or special purpose to Lot's house. The Bible says, and they say, no, name is no, but we will abide in the street all night. We'll stay in the street all night. The next word. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did they only one bread, and they did eat. They stayed there, and they ate. The Bible clearly says, these two men were nobody, but they were looking like a man, but they were angels. They were the men sent by God, God men. 
I told you, sons of men, sons of man, and sons of God. These are all the words given for the angels. So then, when they came, was four. Let me not be there. Was four. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house around, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. The Bible says, then the people came to know there are two men came into this house. They surrounded that house. After surrounding that house, but the, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. See, Sir Gomorrah had a different type of, you know, behavior and different type of sin. And during this men, when they came into the house of Lot, they wanted these two men to come out. They said, tell this men that we shall know them, or we shall lie with them. The next word, verse 6 says, And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after them. The word of God says, the next word, verse 7, And say, I pray you, brethren, do not sow with daily. Don't deal with them with daily. They are special men. They are not worthy. They have come to my house. Don't deal with them wickedly because the, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were wicked. They were doing all wicked things, wrong things. That's why I would like to tell you one more important word. They were doing all sexual immorality. You know? And then verse 8 says, Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. I have two daughters. You can take them. Use them. But don't do any harm to this man. Let me, I pray you, bring them up into you and do you to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto this man do nothing. Don't do anything to this man. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. They came under the shadow of my roof because they never wanted to go to any other house knowing that Sodom and Gomorrah is corrupted and wicked city. Next word. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will we deal worse with thee than with them. We will deal with you worse with Lord and than with the angels. And they pressed so upon the man, even Lord, and came near to break the door. They came to break the door where Lord was standing and talking to them. The next word the Bible says, but the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house, into the house to them and shut the door. But they pulled Lot inside the house and they shut the door. After that, the Bible says, And they spoke the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. These two men, those who entered in Lot's house, they spoke, they punished the people, those who were around the house, they all became blind. Angels of God has judgment in their lives. They take the judgment. And the word of the Lord clearly says, both small and great became blind, so that they, they worried themselves to find the door. They could not find the door. Next word. Now you can read. And the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. In this word, these two men were speaking to Lord. You have anybody else? You have these two doctors, your sons in law, any other relatives? Bring them out of this place. Okay, then. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord. We are going to destroy this Sodom and Gomorrah because the cry has reached unto God. The Bible clearly says, For we will destroy this place because the cry of death is waxing great before the face of the Lord. The cry has come before the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. God's judgment comes through the angel. God sends the judgment upon the people of God, upon this earth, through the angel of God. And therefore, this angel said, We have come to destroy. The judgment of God upon these people is going to come to us. And we had come here to destroy. The next word. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. 
But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son. But his sons in law did not obey. Only his wife and daughters. The next word the Bible says, verse 15. And when the morning arose, the angels, the angels hastened, Lord saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. As we are going to destroy the city with fire, you should not be burned because of their sin. Come on, take your daughters, your wife, let us go on the city. The next word. Come on. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. Verse 17. And it came to pass, when they had brought them, brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to mountain, lest thou be consumed. This angel of the Lord declared the prediction for Lot and his family. The angels of the Lord declared that the judgment of God of fire is going to come upon Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels of the God Almighty also came to guide Lot and his family, and they gave the instructions of God for them, saying that, and it came to pass when they have brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the way. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be burnt, consumed. The word of the Lord clearly says, it is. And Lord said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. He wanted to obey, so he said, Oh, not so, it shall not happen to us. Verse 19. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified the mercy, thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take place, and I die. Verse 20. Behold, now the city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither, is it not the little one? And my soul shall live. Verse 21 and 22. And he said unto him, See, I have I accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. See, the angels were concerned about his life when God sent them as a messenger, predictor, guider, and helper to them. This is the thing that God does to the angels. Last verse 22. Haste thee, slave thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zohar. The Bible says then, angel of the Lord said, okay, you find the city good, go and stay there. Now you will be escaped and so that you shall be saved. And the name of that city was called Zohar. Zohar means protection, Zohar means shelter, Zohar means guided by the Lord. So many other meanings are there for this word. My brothers, my sister, one thing is very important. When the angel of the Lord spoke to Hagar in the Old Testament, angel of the Lord spoke to Lot in the Old Testament, angel of the Lord spoke not only, but the angel of the Lord guided them, angel of the Lord gave them the instruction, angel of the Lord told them about the judgment of God which is going to come upon Sodom and Gomorrah, angel of the Lord protected them, angel of the Lord showed them the way, angel of the Lord brought them to the city and gave them their choice to live. My brothers, my sister, angel of the Lord spoke in the Old Testament to many other people that we are going to continue. But now we are going to close. But this is very, very important for you to understand. Understand the scripture that God has given to us. Understand the, the word of the Lord that God is speaking to us about the godly angels and angels of God. So you shall learn about the angels of God, you shall know about the godly angels, and you shall subtract your life, saying that there is an angel waiting for me to guide me, to instruct me, to teach me, and also to show the judgment of God for me. So that I shall save my soul, and I shall be saved for the blessings of God. Let the blessings of God continue upon every one of you. We are going to continue tomorrow also. The angels of God and godly angels, and the further godly angels, how they spoke to the people in New Testament. Let's all go down and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give all the praise and your honor. Let the mighty hand of God restore upon everyone. Tonight, as we hear your message, this message shall be a message of God to my heart and to the heart of the people. 
Tonight when we hear about godly angel, an angel of the Lord, let the godly angels speak to us. Let the godly angels guide us. Let the godly angels instruct us. Let the godly angels remind us about the judgment of God. Let the godly angels also protect us, guard us, guide us from above, from sides, and from every place that we are living in. The angels of the Lord shall give us the instruction that God wants to give it to us. Lord, I pray this day onwards our life shall be totally according to the word of God and knowing that God has given unto us the angel. Let such type of angels come to us, godly angels. An angel of the Lord shall be given unto all the people of this congregation, this church, and also all around the world, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and Adam. Let the angel of the Lord shall be given unto those creatures, those who fear the Lord and fear the word of God and read the word of God and practice the word of God. Let the angel of the Lord be given unto them, those who need the protection in their life and guidance in their life. Let the angel of the Lord be given unto them to know the instructions of God, oh, who is going to come for the second time. Let the angel of the Lord also speak to every brother, every sister. All the Christians shall know the words of the angel of the Lord and also many more things. And we shall be led by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, and by the angels of God. Help us to understand as God speaks to us that we shall not worship the angel. We shall not bow down to the angel. Neither we shall have images of the angel. Neither we should could keep any pictures of the angel at our doorposts or in our houses. But we shall remember the first law of God. That God alone has given us the law of the commandment of God. You shall have no other gods before me. And we shall remember this and never worship the angels, Lord. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. Thank you, Father, for guiding us. Thank you, Lord, for leading us. In Jesus' almighty name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 May God bless you with this message. May God guide you with this message. May God lead you with this message. Tonight I'm going to pray in a very special way. I see the bright light of God in this auditorium today. It's not my vision. It's God's given vision. And I'm just declaring you. That's all. Nothing else. I'm not a great man. Same thing can come to your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rabba, Rebaba, 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 Let the blessings of God come upon you and shine upon you. Let the glory of God remain upon you. You shall be guided and be victorious in your life. Let the visions of God continue. Let the revelation of God continue. Let the victory of God continue. Let the protection of God continue. Let every blessings of God be given unto you. You shall be victorious. You shall be successful. You shall be blessed. And you shall have a blessed mind. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.